you. Did you love the Lord? Say, I do. Did you love the Lord? Say, I do. Amen. Amen. Glad to be here on, on this occasion. First of all, before you go any further, if you have a mask, spray it on, please. You don't want to spray nothing. If you have a mask, if you don't have one, ask the usher. Not going to say one today, he's going to give you one. My command is to give you one. Amen. Amen. Happy for everyone, all the Christians. Amen. 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 I'm going to bring the word. This is my godson. Hallelujah. Amen. Pass the overseer around. And the other God's son, amen. Praise, amen. Thank God for you. And I know all of them. No other God, though. Hallelujah. I got God people all over the world. Lord, have mercy. We thank God for you. First of all, let's get this started. And you better play that thing today, huh? Lord, son. You better play it. Okay? Everybody, let's bow your head. Let's word of prayer. Bow your head in the word of prayer. We need a savior. Kind like this, we need an anchor. Be sure, very sure. Make the whole with that sort of problem. Jesus, man. They boy said, Jesus, man. Amen. All right, Carrie, Chris Carrie. Amen. Gonna break the ice. Come on, Carrie, Chris Carrie. Where you at? Where you at? Hallelujah. Uh, first Carrie. Amen. And are you here? Amen. Amen. Amen.
Lord, I'd like to say to this Jackson family, the Gordon family, the Howard family, all kind of family. Amen. This is my adopted family, y'all. This is my adopted family. Amen. Glory to God. We love them. Amen. And I want you to know this family really stick together. Hallelujah. Really stick together. And I love that when you stick together. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you stick together, you can get something accomplished. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. But if you scatter, you can't get this accomplished. All right, this time, amen, my godson, uh, Johnny Flame, uh, and also after that, in my shell. You got your soul already, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Praise, Praise God. God. To the Jackson family. Our condolence yeah. to Christ in the head of my life. Yeah. Amen. To all the pastors, yeah. evangelists on the roster. Oh, amen. To my wife, evangelist Fleming, and to each and every one, yeah. friends yeah. and family. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I have a job of doing the uh, Old Testament and New Testament. Amen. Our first is the Old Testament coming from the book of Isaiah. 40, 28, 29 to 31. Okay. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faint nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Our New Testament coming from the book of John 14, 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where we are going. And how can we know the way? Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. I didn't have my glass on during the time. And now his wife's supposed to sing a solo, Essie. Evangelist Essie, hallelujah. Come up, baby. We said, my other goddaughter, hallelujah. I got some of God church. Who will be my God church? Put your hands up. <laughs> sing, baby, sing, sing, sing. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is a homegoing service. It should be exciting. No more pain, no more sickness. My body is tired. We just got back from Orlando, Florida, but Pat, hey, we are here. We wasn't going to let you down because you're like family, amen? Amen. And if I make any mistake, please. Take my mistake for love, amen? Amen. I wanna go where the thunder don't roll. She never had trouble when it's strong blow. Lord, I wanna go where the rain don't blow. Cause when I leave, it's a better to return no more. I just wanna go.
peace, hallelujah, and all good things. God got everything prepared for us from the other side. So this is the time to dress up, dress up, and get ready. When God calls, get ready, hallelujah. Michelle, hallelujah, there God is. Amen. We have a prayer conference. And after that, amen, I'll go to the Madness on the Reef. Let the church say praise the Lord. Amen. Another one of God's angels is gone home. Amen. Today is a day of celebration. I knew Barbara, and Barbara was one of the most beautiful people you could ask to meet in this lifetime. She brought joy to those who were in her presence. Amen. And so those of you that will pray for me, bow your heads at this time. Father, my prayer oh God, because your daughter is at home, Father. My prayer is that you touch them, that you fix them, that you created them a clean heart and renew the right spirit within all of us, God, that are here today, that you prepare us to see you, Jesus. Heaven would be our home. Oh, today, God, I ask you right now to touch the bereaved family. Anoint them with your all of joy for morning. Anoint them today, God, to let them have comfort and faith in their heart that everything is going to be all right. Father, we pray for those, God, that don't know you in the pardon of their sins. That they will come to know you before the end of this service. And every heart said, amen and amen again. May God bless you.
when she got to heaven, y'all hear me? I seen two angels. Everything was white. The clouds, two angels sitting down. And they told her these words. They say, look like Barbara wanted to come up there and work. They said, no, you can't come up here and work. You come up here, you got to rest. Rest in peace. See, that's what Jesus wants us to do. Even while we're on the earth, we shouldn't be worrying about a lot of stuff. But I had that vision, and I just wanted to share that with y'all. She made it into heaven. God showed me that. Pray my continuous in the morning. Hold me. 
And one day, I think, her and my aunt LMA, they was in the house, and this song came on about, fix it, Jesus, fix it. And I think my cousin Crystal in here, she remember all we could hear in the back. What's going on? Y'all ever heard the sound about uh, hold my meal? My aunt represent that. She shouted out of her clothes. Praise God, praise God. No girl stop with me. And today, we all need to be on our foot saying, Lord, I thank you. Because I know where my aunt went. I know she made it. And I got to Me, she said, Steve, she told me even weeks before I came to see her. She was like, my mind is made up and I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to go home. How about you today? Are you ready to go home? My newest life I was living when I was down here. Some of y'all who know me, y'all used to see me on the corner running. I thank God through all my aunt prayers. Not some. I thank each and every one of y'all. I thank all y'all Jackson for sticking together. But my aunt prayed. I was on drugs bad. I'm not afraid to talk, talk about it. I was on drugs bad. Everybody in Crossroads who knows Steve, I need sugar coat. My aunt them prayed for me. When God delivered me, that same woman right there, y'all see, she said, I will not take you back till you straighten up. And she tell you, I almost lost her, my family, and everybody. And I said, Lord, one day I was walking down the street late at night by 11, 30, 12. I got, you got to get sick and tired of stuff. My prayer was very simple. Lord, I'm tired. Deliver me and take the taste and the desire for me. From that day to this day, I ain't never looked back. Never. And the people who know me, who used to lie with me, who used to run with me, what you see now? I couldn't keep money in my pocket, I couldn't dress right, I couldn't do nothing. But everybody who see me now asks me, Stevie, what, what's going on? Jesus. You want to know it, Jesus? And it was because of my prayers. And some of the pastors. I thank God for my godfather, Elder Abel Houston. He always sung this out. I got a feeling it's going to be all right. But I got a feeling it's all right right now within my soul. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't sugarcoat for nobody. Everybody who knows me, I'm real. I don't, I don't play games. Just like... Ella Houston stuck with, I mean, he, he, was, I, he didn't play with me, good God Almighty. Him and Ella Oliver, they did not play. If you came up under their teaching and, and the late uh, Bishop Ernest uh, Kelly, if you didn't get nothing from them, you weren't going to get it. Bishop told me years ago when I was a young boy, he said, whatever you do, don't do it for a show of entertainment. Do it under the anointing of God. And if God has blessed you and touched your life, you shouldn't be sitting there. I'm, not, I'm not, not up here to preach, but my aunt told me she wanted a home-going service, and that's what we're going to do. I ask y'all to pray for me.
20, 30 years ago, I said, pass through Crossroads. Got a 15 passenger van. Oh, I stopped at the Jackson house, and my van got loaded. <laughs> All of those young boys and girls, come in my van. Come in my, I, you know, I said sometimes, I said, Lord, don't let be too much. I gotta, I gotta feed them all, but I go back, I gotta feed them. <laughs> but thank God, thank God. That's why I come home, my God, sure. Hallelujah. Thank God for them, hallelujah. All right, baby, next one is uh, what? The Lord's Fair. The Lord's Fair. Where are you, baby? Hallelujah, God. Amen. Good evening, church. Good evening, church. Good evening to my family, the Jackson family. It is an honor today to stand in front of you today to honor and say something about my cousin and my friend, Barbara Tiki Jackson. Tiki was her name. Uh, today, I look at the program and I said, oh, we have a new way of spelling Barbara, or uh, is that Barbie? But anyway, Barbara left a very deep mark on the heart of many today. Her kindness, her honesty, and most of all, her perseverance. Barbara endured and she persevered. Yes. We made a lot of memories throughout our childhood days. No worries of the world. We were close during our preteen and teenage years. The other day I was talking to Ella, and of course, Barbara's father and my grandfather were the tillers of the earth. There was nothing that was not planted on the Jackson Hill. We grew up off the vegetables of the land. Uh, we bought peanuts. We went in the cornfield and sat in the cornfield and ate pears from the pear tree. We had grapes on the grape bible. We had plums. They provided everything that we needed to survive. Barbara and I loved to walk the road. So we would go from Miss Gordon's store back to Crossroads, and sometimes we would even walk all the way to Rice Farm. There was a place called Horns, I don't know if you all remember, but we would even walk to Horns together. Uh, we, I came to Crossroad on Sunday. My mother would always visit her relatives. She believed that on Sundays it was the day to go see about our elder members and members of our family. And when we got there, and a dump would be sitting on the porch. And she would call my mother, hey, Miss, where those children at? She always wanted to see us. So Barbara and I would take that time and we would go walking. We would go down to uh, Till's house where Rosalind was. So we grew up loving each other. Uh, one summer, our grand, our father, her father and my grandfather used to love to grow sugar cane. Yeah. So we would get on the back of the wagon and we would ride down to Anseal House and they would grind the cane. And Barbara and I would sit there and drink the cane juice until we couldn't drink anymore. But that was the good time of our life. We can never say that we grew up hungry because we had people who provided for us daily. Barbara was a wonderful mother to her daughters and protector of her grandchildren. She has laid a strong foundation for them. Barbara's beautiful spirit 
will live on. During her illness, I believe that there were three things that kept her going. Her children, her grandchildren, and her belief in Jesus Christ. We did not communicate always, but we did not doubt our mutual love for each other. Maya Angelou once wrote that people will forget what you say. People will forget what you do, but people will never forget how you treat them. I never forget the times we talked. I'll never forget the secret. I'll always remember the way she laughed and smiled. All the times we shared together, all the time that we spent. To my family, life is just a stepping stone. A pause before we make it home. A simple place to rest and be until we reach eternity. Everyone has a little journey, a path to take with lots to see. God guides our steps along the way, but we were never meant to stay. Our final destination is a place filled with love, his majestical power and grace. Today, we celebrate the life of a loved one. Who has gone before? The race she has won. Her journey has now ended. Her spirit has ascended, claiming the great reward with Jesus our Lord. I say to my family, hold fast to God, for he is able to do abundantly above all we can expect and receive. To my family, I say I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. of the gospel, amen, I thank God for my wife, Dr. Apostle, Michelle Gordon, amen, amen, last night I was laying in my bed thinking, okay, what can I say as a cousin, and as I was laying there, I began to just picture in my mind, and I saw Tiki, amen, and I could, saw, I could see her saying, I'm all right, come on, I am all right. So anything I have to say on today is for the family, amen. Because I believe that she is all right. Amen. amen. We heard the testimony, amen, of Brother Stevie, amen, saying how his, some of the last moments he had with his auntie, amen, she was telling him that she's good. Amen. She's good, amen. So, amen, we do give honor today to her daughters, amen, Taisha and Lakeisha, her grandchildren, amen. Amen. We thank God for all of her sisters, amen, her siblings. Amen. I thank God for Sister Burke because one thing you said is, as family, we love one another coming up. Amen. And we look back into the way our parents and grandparents raised us. It was so different than the way we are today. Amen. It's so different. Amen. And one thing I remember my childhood coming up that I can say, that my aunts, uncles, my father, my mother, amen, the Gordon siblings, they love one another. Oh, yeah. They love and they saw about one another. Yeah. Amen, let me just read this. I was trying to prepare something, amen. But on behalf of my paternal grandparents, John and Justine Gordon, amen, I do honor, let me put on my glasses, you understand me, amen. <laughs> I do honor their children from which we are first cousins, 
Amen. A special honor to my aunt Ernestine Dunk Gordon Jackson yes. and her sibling. Amen. And her sibling, Phyllis Beauty Gordon Howard. Yes. Amen. Yes. Annie Gordon Rothauer. Yes. Willie May Gordon Carter. Yes. Theodore T. Gordon. Yes. Johnny Gordon. Yes. Seaborn Gordon. Yes. Isaiah Gordon. Yes. And Perry Lover Gordon. Yes. Yes. Amen. We thank God for those. Yes. Amen. Because they showed us the way. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I'm talking about love. Right. Amen. They showed us how siblings are supposed to love one another. Yes. Right. Amen. I remember my father, he was always playing a garden. Come on, baby. And his five children, we had to go out there because he wouldn't hire someone to come and till the ground. We had to go out there and hold the grass, make the grass, take the hole and dig up the ground, come back with the rake and spread it out and even it off. And then daddy would come and make the rows. And him and mama would take and plant the seeds. And in the evening time, we had to go to the pump and pump the water and get a cup and go with a cup. And water each of the crops. <laughs> and then when it was harvest time, <laughs> then we bag everything up, most of it, and take it down the road and give it to his sisters and his brothers. <laughs> and we went to really did all this work. Now I'm talking from a child's point of view. We done did all this work. But you don't take the crop and give it away. <laughs> See, I didn't understand. But now that I'm older, I understand what Daddy was doing. Because him and his brother, Uncle Perry, they would discuss, well, I'm going to plant this, this, and this. And Uncle Perry would say, well, I will plant this, this, and this. So when it's harvest time, they all had the same thing because they shared. And they made sure they took some down to the sisters. They made sure that we, they had everything common. And then I know about two years ago, I went to see Ella May. I passed by, she was on the porch. And she often tell me, Don, I won't see you until Butchie come home. And I said, Ella, now that's not always true. Now, I, when I passed by and see you on the porch, I would turn around and come back and sit down and speak with you, amen. But for the most part, she didn't see me until Butchie come home. <laughs> Amen. But Butch and I, we grew up as brothers. Amen. Yeah. But we sat on the porch in L.A. And I believe Annie came up afterwards. We began to talk about the old days yeah. and how we were raised and the love that we had for one another. Yeah. And on the weekends, the streets would be full because all the young people would be walking up and down the road, going to the school, right. playing basketball. We had a park where we can go in there and play baseball or softball. But it was so much love in the family. Amen, we need to get back to that family. Oh, yeah. Amen, we need to get back to loving one another. Yeah. Amen, because time is going short. Yeah. Time is going short. Amen, I can say on today that I love you. Amen, and like I said, I, I do honor you all today because amen. Bravo, amen, she was a sweet person, a loving person. And I remember the last two visits I had with her. And I stopped with the second to the last visit. My wife and I went to see her, and when we walked in, she was there with the sitter. And when she saw me, she just bust out and started laughing. Come on. And for about two minutes, she just looked at me. She just laughed. And she started looking at my stomach area. She just laughed. I said, now come on, cuz, leave me alone. I said, my stomach is not that big. <laughs> but she laughed, then we sat down and we talked. In the very last visit I had with her about three, months, about three weeks ago, but I went to see her, amen. When I walked in, she looked at me. She said, cuz, you look good. She said, cuz, you look good. And we sat there, we talked about for 30, 40 minutes, amen, and I left. Amen, and to look at her, you would not know that she was sick. To look at her, you would not know, because I looked at her, I said, man, you plump, you know, because coming up, if y'all remember her from years ago, she was a small, petite yeah. size. They used to walk really fast. And I remember she would always wear these fat blue jeans. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Amen. But we thank God for her today, amen. Because I believe that all is well with her soul. Amen. But I would give a word of encouragement to the family, amen. That if, this, if you don't know the Lord, get to know him. 
Amen. Amen. Because time is winding down. Uh, Amen. Went back to see my brother. She had the glorious opportunity yes. because she knew her time was drawing near. Yes. Come on. Yes. See, some people, they die a tragic death yes. or a sudden death. And if they don't have it together, they don't have the opportunity to get it together. Amen. But when you know your time is drawing near, let me, let me change that. We all know our time yeah. is drawing near. Yeah. Amen. But she knew her time was drawing near. She had an opportunity to prepare her soul, in which I believe she did. Yeah. Amen. But let me say to the family, amen, prepare your soul. <laughs> amen. Prepare your soul because this is the land of the dying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And in the next life, we want to be in the land of the living. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Y'all pray for me on today as I pray for you. Yeah. first cousin, but uh, the way we grew up was pretty close, so she was always like an auntie to me, Come her on. and all her sisters, so we are pretty close. Uh, I'm not the greatest public speaker, because, you know, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm the quiet one, but uh, Crystal kind of reminded me of uh, all the memories we shared with Barbara, and I just felt compelled to come and say a few words. Uh, man. I was always, uh, I wasn't always the innocent, quiet one, but um, <laughs> Barbara, always, she always uh, welcomed me with open arms. She never turned me away, you know, and uh, she always gave me this look when she see me. She was like, um, are you being good? You know, she always gave me that look. Um, man, it's just, it's, it's, I, I didn't think I'd see her like this so soon, but. Um, a long time ago, I used to always uh, just knock on Barbara's door late at night because, you know, I used to get in certain situations. And, uh, you know, the door, the door always open, you know, and she always, you know, get on in here. You know, she never turned me away. Uh, for that, you know, I'm always love her, I'm always miss her, you know. Uh, But uh, I can say I'm always miss her. We will always miss her. I'm always love her. Um, praying for the rest of the family. Taisha, Keisha, uh. <laughs> But again, like I said, it's gonna be short and sweet. And uh, I just came here to show my respect for Auntie. Love you. Always will. Thank you. All right, the grandchildren.
Jesus and David Bill. That was my favorite lady. Every, and I don't know if um, Nurse Aid is here. Oh, I'm not. Okay. Um, every morning I'll get ready to go to work. I had to be to work by 6 30. I'm gonna finish this. I had to be ready, I had to be to work by 6 30. I'll get off work. I'll get off, I'll come home. She'll get off at 4 o'clock. I literally have 30 minutes to myself. Didn't always get it. Sometimes I got it. And it was like every time I walk through the door. My grandma had that one seat that she sat in. And every time I walked through the door, hey, my favorite lady, and she would smile. If I could get that smiling,
I didn't expect to say anything, but I just had to because I'm the oldest. Mama. So she started laughing, and uh, I was like telling her, you know, she would be delegating the people who had the job what to do and stuff. And it was like our little inside joke. And then uh, there would be times that I have to pick her up and uh, take her home. And when I would get ready to do that, I'd say, hey, you want to go over here or go over there? And she'd be like, no, take me home. I'm tired. I'm ready to go home now. And I would do it just to aggravate her. It would always be fun. But um, definitely towards the end, it was a struggle um, seeing her. I tried to make it as pleasant as possible as, as I could. Um, 
I would make eggs and certain things that she really liked how I did it. And a lot of times I'd ask her, um, you want any breakfast? No, I'm good, I don't want nothing. I'm like, you sure give her make some eggs? And she'd be like, how you making it? I'm like, the way you like it. Yeah, make me some. And she'd try, but uh, she couldn't eat a lot due to her state and everything. But I'm definitely gonna miss her, and she made a, a major impact on me as well for the short time that I've had to spend with her. And I'm definitely grateful for that. That's all I got. Sickness, no more pain, no more crying. And my brothers and sisters, we will be home at last. Amen. And all our troubles and care will be past. Amen. And we will rejoice in that new Jerusalem. Am I right about it? Well, folks, that we every day will be like sun. And Sabbath will have no end. My brothers and sisters, and we will praise him over and over again and again. But God is good. Yes. Amen. And we're worthy to be praised. So, amen. We love you. Amen. And we continue to pray for you, my brothers and sisters. And amen. we're going to continue to trust in the Lord. Amen. amen. Because one of these days, amen, for all of us, I have a saying, amen. For the Houston, uh, many of us in here have more days behind us than we have ahead of us. Did y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And it's time to get right now. Yeah. And I always say there's nothing in this world that's worth going to hell for. Did y'all hear me? Yeah. So we're going to give our brothers and sisters our hands to the Lord and know that, amen, he said these words in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout. Is that right? With the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And then he said, the dead in Christ, the dead in Christ, on, on the line there, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we who are alive and remain, we shall be caught up with them in the cloud and meet the Lord in the air. 
And somebody said, I will be at that meeting. God bless you. grandchildren have been unbelievable. But I did want to say, after I give honor to God and all those ministers of the gospel, those that are here at this family, Desmond Lord and I, I'm a hat man, and I almost got up and asked you for that hat that you had in your hand. Sharp it looks. That's how I want you to feel. That's how Papa wants you to smile some. 53 years ago, I'd come home from Vietnam about six months, and I got a job at home furnishing, selling furniture for the truck. Y'all don't see that anymore, young folks. And one of the first people I met was this glorious lady, Miss Dunn. What a profound effect she had on my life. And most of a lot of her children were still in school and Bob was about in the tenth grade or so. But I thank God for the time I spent with her and her husband. God has blessed me. I've been blessed to and even at the White House call senators by their first names and sit in the State House of Representatives for 20 years. But I've met very few people that I love like I love your mom, grandma, your granddad. And I, I came today in spite of really I was scheduled to be some other places. So I put a condolence note online last night because I wasn't planning on coming. But I woke up and I said, that's Miss Dump's door. We got to be there. These two girls, it's Jackson and Gordon family. I heard it said the other day, but it's one of my favorite sayings. If you see a turtle sitting on a fence post, you got to know somebody had to put him there. So I try never to forget it was folk like the Jacksons. They helped put me where I am by instilling in me the kind of love that they didn't have to see, they just showed it to me. And these girls are nice to me only because their mama told them they had to be. <laughs> For years, Annie Craig would show up in Atlanta for my Black Caucus Festival in February, and she retired, and I ain't heard no more from her. <laughs> but I'm profoundly proud of this next generation that the torch must be passed to. Thank you so much, and I, I never speak at a funeral, and I'm not on the program. What in the world do you tell Elder Houston when he tell you to get up? <laughs> but get up. And I will apologize because one of the great friends I have is Pastor Oliver, who's getting ready to preach. Close friend, not just an associate, but a friend. I'm apologizing to it in advance. I have really got to go. I had things in my pocket. When he called my name that I had to take out, it would be bulky when I got up here. But I'm proud of you young folk. But most of all, I want you to know your responsibility that your grandmother now leaves on you. It's very simple. Just be somebody. It's easy to be. It's easy to end up wrong. It's just as easy to end up right. You're depending on you. She's depending on you. She was strict. She needed to be. I got five boys. 
some of them I should have I should have whipped more than I did. I told one the other day, I just wished I could have skipped all of y'all and went straight to my grandchildren. The Lord doesn't let you do that. Y'all make your family proud of you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Presider, the Bishop. And I apologize again, Pastor Oliver, for leaving. But I, it's been a great home going so far. It has been wonderful. It's been inspiring and moving, and it has been joyful. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all. Oh, most of all, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. God bless you. You ain't got to read that, but you got it in your hand. Yes. You got to read that picture where it's going to go out of there. It's going to go Knowledge of men all the The daughter, they got to know you very good. And they went to the house for a month ago. She was alive. She was alive. Prayer crew went to the house. Amen. We pray for her. Hallelujah. The question is, have anything in your life? Get it up. Get it up. You can't make it to heaven with a little ism, a little skill. You've got to be right with God. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. Keep on sticking together, family. Stick together. Hallelujah. I don't care what comes your way. Hold your head high and say hallelujah. Anyhow. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God will.
Respect to the Brady family. Respect to the roster. Respect to our Bishop Abel Houston. Respect to my Bishop Moses Lewis. Respect to this family. Someone said you fight on. Give God praise for not being here. Hopefully, that this would be more a occasion where we can laugh and have a good time. But regardless of how the occasion we seem to be, there comes a time nothing hurts us the most when you see a mother going home. I've lost my mother 12 years ago, so I understand exactly where you are. But I want to let you know that earth have no sorrow that heaven can't eat. One thing I admire about this family I watched these young men, how they got up and expressed for their grandmother. The one thing they did that only God can inspire them to do, they let me know that they have a heart that they can be touched. You don't really see young men cry. That tells me that they have a heart. That God can touch. Yeah. I say to you young men, there's nothing wrong with crap. Yeah. Don't lose the tears. Yeah. Keep crying. Yeah. We are here to, I have to downsize because of the time. The last person to speak will get the blame for everything. So I have to be brief, but I have to try to bring the point. Did anybody, do we have any, all, how many ministers and pastors in the building? Put your hand up, please. Y'all are under, y'all know exactly where I am. Pray much for us. And we are going to talk to you briefly this morning, this afternoon. I'm going to miss our dear mother. Uh, the battle of cancer. And her and my wife used to be to the same uh, center where we go to get their treatment. And whenever I see her, uh, whenever she comes through, sometimes she gets there a little earlier than my wife. And, but she'll come out with a smile. And she have a smile that demands a smile. And uh, I never saw her where going through the treatments where it was burdensome to smile. And I remember Chris said, and then over to the house, and I guess she was in so weak a state until when we sung a song, wash your wash away my sin, nothing but the blood. And the song, she might could have not sing it as strong as she wanted, but her hand. <laughs> That tells me she was in unison with the song. Not only in unison with us, but she had an opportunity or ability to understand what the song is all about. I'm trying to get right to the point. To talk to you, I want to bring to your attention before we move forward a statement was used by Job. 
1414. And this question that Job asked in 1414 said, if a man die, shall he live again? All the days of his appointed time will I wait on the Lord. This question have prayed men and women throughout the age. This question reminisce to our minds. It's not that we're not going to die, but Job was concerned, if I die, yeah. will I live yes. again? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. He wanted to declare to you that, that just because we are to this point doesn't mean it is over. I heard one of the grandsons says, I wish I could go with mom. Don't worry, son, just keep living. Don't worry. That's right. That's right. All of us have an expiration date. Yours may be different from mine, but we have an expiration date. I'm going to read a text and I'm going to give you a thought and I will work with that. Then we will be out of here. The text we will read from will be 2 Corinthians 5 and 1. It says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with him. Eternal in the heaven. Yes, Lord have mercy. Thank you, God. Then we will read Thessalonians, the fourth chapter and 13th verse. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. If you don't mind this with me for a little bit, I want to talk on the subject. When last did you read the manual? When last did you read the manual? I'm not talking about a manual of a cooking. I'm talking about a manual. To bring you up to speed when you buy a new car. Yeah. Or you buy a house. There's a manual that's uh -huh. in there to let you know what the in, what the things does. Yeah. Uh, the car, what the car does. Yeah. Right. How to put it on more control. Yeah. How to most of the time we want to read the manual to see uh, how Far can I go on a gallon of gas? It tells you everything in the manual. Yes. The manual that we uh, acquainted with in life. If we buy our flat screen TV, we want to grab the manual. Right. Yes. See how this yes. thing works. Right. There's a manual given to us since the beginning of time. Yes. When Adam and Eve was born and God created Adam and Eve, they was given a man. Most of the time, you, just stay with me, you'll give, you'll give it after one. And uh, a manual is an instruction given to help assist us in whatever we are dealing with. The man. And Adam and Eve have a, had a manual that only states, touch not this tree, 
For the day you eat of this tree, you will surely die. Giving them instruction. Right, right. And we wonder why God always give us instruction. Right. Mm -hmm. I recall that when mother was born in this world, she had an opportunity to live. Looking at her portraits on the program, she was a beautiful lady. Right. To the day I saw her, she was still beautiful. But how be ever, most of us that are sitting in here now, we did not pick up the manual and read it, although when we came in this world, the Bible said that for we know that if our earthly house were dissolved, glory to God, of this tabernacle will dissolve, we have a building. Now one thing about this life, when we were born, nobody sat down and told us about the expectation of what God required. Sometimes we have to live as time progresses. We come into the man of looking at this family Somebody read the man. In order for you to hear the attributes of what God required, somebody had to read the man you to pass. Oh, God, the instruction. Y'all better stay with me. Somebody had to relay a message. Somebody had to read the man you to delay the message. And I believe that uh, with mother's life, her mother. Maybe she didn't uh, actually know what the manual required. Uh -huh. But maybe her mother knew what the requirement was. Right. And as she taught her, then she taught her too. Uh, I hear somebody say mama was hard. Y'all mama wasn't. Y'all had it real good. <laughs> I'm 66 now, and when I was younger, when we got beaten, we got beaten. Y'all, 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 y'all get whipping. This ain't get whipping. We got beat. Uh, I remember one occasion, my mama, we used to get whipped with stinging call. Switch. The switch out the wood. Long switch tied together. Right, right, right. Brother, when they hit you, you were hit. You know you were hit, sir. <laughs> One day I played. I laid on the floor and I played dead. I said, maybe mama stop beating. I said, I can't breathe. And I thought she would have stopped beating. But it seemed like she read the manual when Jesus read last. <laughs> And she kept shopping. She said, I guess she said, rise, Lazarus. <laughs> Brought me back. Whoa. Time have changed. And these, we as members, we as family, we must understand that the manual holds the key to eternity. The manual holds eternal life. Right, right. The manual holds. Yeah, see, we got to understand, uh, we got to bring our family back to the manual yes. of what God stipulated for America to live. Yes. Yeah, if we, we if families will come back to the manual. We have less kids. If we will come back to the men, we'll stay on our knees. Yes, if we will just come back to the men. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It said that glory to God, that glory to God in two said, for, for we know that if our earthly house. See, you got to read the man, you to know this. That though, glory to God, that we might be in this life. 
Bible tells me the man you told me said, prosecution will come. Yes. But God will deliver us from them all. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. David must be read the manual because David said, though I walk through the night, yes. of the shadows of death, I'll see him no more. Yes. Oh, you got to look, you got to, you better hook up with somebody that reads the man. Don't, don't hook up with somebody that goes to God. Sometimes my wife always tell me, say, honey, we buy things and she she'll buy stuff. And she said, honey, can you put it together? I said, I got it, girl. Yeah. But in some way, somehow, when I put it all together, I got a screw and a nut left. That means I didn't follow the man to the left. And but we got to understand that we might make mistakes on things materialistic, but when we come down to the manual from God, we better follow to the team. God said, come unto me, all you that labor are heavy labor. Take my yoke upon you. Shall a man continue in sin that God may abound? God forbid. Glory to God. We got to read what the manual says. There's no need for you to fuss your family down. There's no need to tell them they're wrong. There's no need to point to them that glory to God, you no good. No, 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 no. Back up. Hallelujah. Just take them to the man. Yeah. And show them what the manual said. Yeah. What the manual said about it. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Yeah. The Bible tells me, said, though my sin be red as crimson, yeah. God will wash me white as snow. Yeah. That's what the manual tells me. Yeah. God have mercy, Jesus. I thought that I was no good, brother. I thought that my life, it was no good. Nobody could fix it. I thought it was over. Nobody could fix my life. My life was too broken up. It was like it was, it was like a like a ball busting up against a wall. I didn't know where all the pieces were. I can't say nothing about mama now because it's over. We can't say nothing to help her or diminish her. Nothing on her part. It's closed. It's over. It's up to you and me now. Oh yeah. I got to tell you the man. I don't know about you, but I thought my life was over. I didn't see no good within my own self. Do we have anybody that didn't see no good in yourself? Oh, I guess I'm the only one. I didn't see no good within my own self. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I heard somebody preach the man. In 1979, I heard the manual preached. Hallelujah. Didn't know what the manual said. Didn't understand what it said. But I, one thing I didn't knew right. that the power, there was power in the man. Yeah. And when the preacher preached, the word of God, I think the of the Holy Ghost, something took out the man. That's why you got to go to the man. Bible said in verse 17 said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. We hold all things. Yes, sir. new. When I heard that in the man, I said, you mean to tell me I can come new? Better than nasty I was? Yes, sir. I can become new? Look at somebody say, you mean to tell me we can come new? Yes, man, you tell me I can't. I don't care what your sin look like. I don't care what the enemy must be doing. I don't care what you went through. God can turn it around. You better touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, God can turn it around. If we're going to see him other again, if we're going to meet back again in glory, if we're going to come back together as a family in heaven, you got to read the man. Yeah, you must subject yourself. You got to come down and yield yourself, humble yourself. Amen, amen, by the man. Jesus said in his word, he said from the manual, amen, glory to God, anyone that are going through, uh -huh. glory to God, and your burden is so heavy that it's overwhelming and you don't know what else to do, he said, come to me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, come unto me. Oh, yeah. oh not some all yeah. broke. Busted and disgusted yeah. all. Yeah. Drunks, alcoholic, come. Yeah. Rhinos, come. Yeah. 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 
Show me from the manual. 
lack of knowledge. If you don't know what the right thing is, you, know, you will do what you think to do. The Bible said it is a way seem right to a man. But the end, somebody shot the end. in you. Grandmama passed some stuff in y'all guys. 
And I want you to know you won't get by. You've got to come to it. There it is in my closing. I normally give this point to encourage the family. There's a story that I heard that there was two sons. One name was life and the other one name was death. And uh, I was told that death was an old Scrooge, always sneaky, conniving. Life always was easy going, pleasant. So life says, I'm going to save my money to buy mama a gift. And life starts saving and saving and putting it in the box for the gift. And he saved for a while till it came to the day that he said, I'm going to see how much I have so I can buy my mama a gift. And knowing death, he always sneaking around peeping, trying to take something that's not here. And sure enough, the day came when he went to see how much he had in the box. When he got the box, all the money that was in the box were gone. Even the box. And he cried. Saying, Mama, all I wanted to do was to buy you a gift. And the mama said, I know that old death wasn't no good. Somebody said, I want you to know how many of you know it's good to have somebody overseas more than what you can see. She told him to a life, said, life, don't worry. I know death was a Scrooge, and I know he was tricky, said, but he don't know what I did. I found the box, and I took everything that you had in the box, I took it out, and I got it in a safe place. She said, all death had. All he's running with is an empty box. All death is running with is an empty box. The soul Jesus got the good. Family, hold up your hand. You will see her again. One day we will all Leave the Jesus in the air, and forever we will be with the Lord in the past. And there will be no more crime, no more death, no more sickness, no more disease. I pray, God, that something was said today that helped you. All death had is an empty body. So hold up your head. They say, Mama, I'll see you again. Grandpa, I'll see you again. Auntie, I'll see you again. Those that sleep in the Lord, when the Lord brings you to what do you call?
first tab of the Michigan Adventist Church, Church of Resolution, with Sister Barbara Ann and Jackson Marcus. We are accompanied today by God's Word in John 14, 1 and 6, which says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with, with me, that you shall be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where we're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Whereas Sister Barbie Ann Jackson Davis passed away this life on July 14, 2022. And whereas God Almighty rendered this time for Sister Barbie Ann Jackson Davis to take her rest in a prepared place made only by his hands. For in Matthew 11 and 28 and 30, it says, Come unto me, all you that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Whereas Sister Barbie Ann Jackson Davis worship and fellowship with us at First Cabin Michigan Baptist Church in Hyattsville, Georgia, with a heart of sincerity, meekness, joy, gentleness, and love. Her quiet spirit radiated through God's strength, and Sister Barbie Ann Jackson Davis exhibited her trust in the Lord. First Calvary Missionary Baptist Church was blessed by her presence in our congregation. Be at peace in the everlasting love of the Lord. Respectfully submitted on this 20, 23rd day of July, 2022. On behalf of the officers and members of First Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, Hinesville, Georgia, Reverend Dr. Sinclair L. Roy, Sister Deborah Rocha. Of your mother, just gotta get her on. 
how beautiful is the mother's love, how blessed are the lives it touches. With deepest sympathy to the Jackson family from your cousin, Angela. You're in my thoughts and prayers. Each time I pray for you, I'm reminded that God who created you can put your word, your world back together again. With deepest sympathy, your cousins and that and Gail. Yeah. 